Hello everyone and this is the daily quiz series for NEET PG 2025 and we are in week 3, day 6. This week we are discussing general physiology and muscle physiology. We have another day in these two topics and day after tomorrow I start with renal and GI tract. So let's look at the first question. It says, identify the true statement regarding the point marked on the myocardial action potential. Now, the myocardial action potential curve, this is known as the plateau potential. As you can see in the diagram, there is a plateau phase, a horizontal phase. Uh, in fact, there are five phases in the plateau potential. Phase 0, phase 1, phase 2, the one which is marked in the image phase 3 and phase 4. Now the upstroke is because of a sodium influx. Phase 1, which is the early repolarization phase, it is due to closure of sodium and opening of potassium channels. So option C is actually responsible for phase 1. Then you have the phase 2. Now what happens in phase 2 is potassium leaves the cell and calcium starts entering the cell via slow calcium channels, which are sometimes also known as slow sodium calcium channels. So basically, there is loss of positive charge and there is gain of positive charge. So there will be no change in potential and you get a horizontal line, which is the plateau phase. Then at this point, which I've marked with a black arrow, the calcium channels close. And in phase three, now I only have a potassium efflux. So the plateau phase is due to a slow but prolonged opening of the calcium channels. Now what is the advantage of the plateau? Now because of the plateau phase, the total duration of the action potential has increased. Now let's compare it with the skeletal muscle. In the skeletal muscle, the duration of action potential is 3 to 5 milliseconds. But in the case of the cardiac muscle, it has increased to 250 milliseconds. It has got prolonged and this is because of the presence of the plateau phase. So not only has the duration of action potential increased, but also the duration of the absolute refractory period. Now, what is absolute refractory period? It is from the firing level, firing level in the cardiac muscle cells is minus 75 millivolts till the repolarization is one third complete. This is known as the absolute refractory period, which has got widened here. This wide absolute refractory period is because of the plateau phase. And because of this prolonged or widened uh, absolute refractory period, the heart muscle cannot be tetanized. See, what is tetanus? Tetanus is a state of sustained contraction. In the heart muscle, we want contraction, relaxation, systole, diastole. If the heart goes into a sustained contraction or a sustained systole, that is the end of story. So this tetanization in the heart is prevented by the prolonged absolute refractory period. Let's look at the next question. It says, which of the following is the correct order from lateral to medial in a sarcomere? Now, when I look at the uh, 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 image of the sarcomere, we find this here is the Z line. And this is another Z line. Between the two Z lines, you have the structural and the functional unit of the skeletal muscle, which is the sarcomere. Then here, you have the light band or the I band. I band consists of only actin and remember half of I band is in one sarcomere, half is in a neighboring sarcomere. So I here, then you have the A band which is the dark band. This dark band is myosin plus overlapped actin. So the A band and within the A band you have a slightly lighter area which is only myosin and that is the H band or the H zone and finally right in the middle of the sarcomere you have what is known as the M line. 
So from lateral to medial, this is going to be Z I E H M. So the answer here is D. Let's have a look at the next question. It says an elderly man is admitted to the hospital with confusion, disorientation, vomiting, generalized weakness. On examination, his BP is 90 by 50. So he's definitely hypotensive. His initial serum sodium is 112. So there is also a hyponatremia. But this is increased to 132 milli equivalents per liter, almost normal. Normal sodium is 135 to 145 with IV hypertonic saline over a period of 24 hours. This should immediately ring a bell. Hyponatremia has to be treated, has to be corrected very gradually. This is a rapid correction of hyponatremia. If whenever a patient presents with hyponatremia, the first day you can do a correction of 8 to 10 milli equivalents per litre. That means first day I could have corrected his sodium from 112 to 122. Second day, 5 to 6. So from 120, 122, I could have taken it to 127. Third day, another 5. 132. So I should have corrected the sodium over at least three to four days. In this case, there is a very rapid correction of hyponatremia which has been done and that results in a central pontine myelinosis. The myelin in the pons starts getting disintegrated and that has multiple symptoms like there is quadriparesis, there is dysphagia, there is dysarthria. So this points towards a central pontine myelinosis. Now one point here and that is why do we need to uh, why do we need to do a very gradual correction of hyponatremia? The reason is that whenever there is a hyponatremia the brain cells undergo what is known as they undergo what is known as a osmotic adaptation now plasma sodium normally is 135 to 145 this is reduced to 112 normally outside osmolality is 290 milliosmoles per liter with sodium of 135 to 145 inside is also, the osmolality is 290 milliosmoles per liter. Now, because there is a hyponatremia, the ECF osmolality has reduced, but ICF is still at 290. So, how do the brain cells adapt osmotically? There is a decrease in the intracellular osmolality. Firstly, why do we need to do this? This is to prevent a shift of water because water always goes from a dilute to a concentrated solution. So if the outside osmolality is lower, it is a dilute solution, water will start entering the cells. To prevent that, the brain cells undergo what is known as osmotic adaptation. There is a decrease in intracellular osmolality. How does that happen? There is a uh, number one export of, of potassium. Potassium moves out of the cells. And number two, there is a decreased intracellular synthesis and extrusion of osmolites, which are the osmolites. These are osmotically active particles such as betaine, inositol and glutamine. So whenever there is a lowered plasma sodium level and therefore a decreased plasma osmolality, Intracellular osmolality of the brain cells also reduces so that there is no shift of water. Now, if I do a rapid correction here, if I rapidly increase the sodium and bring it back to normal, I'm going to create a problem for my patient because now his intracellular osmolality is lower and outside has increased. So cells start losing water and that's how myelinosis happens. So hyponatremia has to be corrected gradually. Both hypo and hyponatremia have to be corrected gradually. One more clinical point, because there is an extrusion of glutamine in hyponatremia, when glutamine moves out of the cells, it gets converted to glutamate and glutamate is an excitatory transmitter, neurotransmitter 
this now precipitates seizures. Seizures are very common in patients with chronic hyponatremia. So answer to this question is pretty simple. This is central pontine myelinosis. Now, let's look at the other options. Is there a cerebral edema due to persistent hyponatremia? No, hyponatremia has got corrected here. So this is not the answer. In Wernicke's encephalopathy, which is due to deficiency of vitamin B1, thiamine deficiency, the triad for Wernicke's encephalopathy is ophthalmoplegia, that is ataxia, and there is confusion. confusion right so that is called the triad in hepatic encephalopathy there should be a history of hepatic disease so best answer here is central pontine myelinosis next let's have a look at uh, this question a patient presented with severe watery diarrhea resembling rice water stools damage to which structure is likely to have caused or resulted in this type of diarrhea now when i look at the enterocytes Towards the lumen, the enterocytes have something known as, they are bound by something known as tight junctions. There are tight junctions towards the luminal side and that prevents a paracellular movement of substances. These tight junctions form what is known as the zonula occludens. This is formed by the tight junctions. Now, rice water stools gives you an idea that this is cholera. Vibrio cholerae secretes two types of toxins. There is a cholera toxin and a zonula occludens toxin. Zonula occludens toxin will act over these tight junctions or the zonula occludens and that is how uh, there is paracellular movement of substances including water and so there is rice water stools a severe watery diarrhea when i say paracellular movement that means not only from the lumen to the blood vessels but also from the blood vessels to the lumen let's look at the next question now this says solution a which has got 10 millimoles of urea It's a 10 millimole urea solution and solution B which is good which is a 5 millimole urea solution and it says the membrane is freely permeable to urea if it is freely permeable to urea then it will move from solution A to solution B from higher to lower concentration right so urea starts moving from solution A to solution B the question says if the concentration of urea is doubled if it becomes 20 millimoles what will happen to the rate of transport now please understand what is important now this is a passive movement of urea not requiring energy and for any passive movement it will be directly proportional to the concentration gradient delta c it is not proportional to the concentration but the concentration gradient the difference in the concentration on the two sides of the membrane. So if you look at it, in the first situation, when solution A, the urea was 10, in solution B, 5, the gradient was 10 minus 5, which is 5. When urea in solution A becomes 20, the gradient becomes 15. So that means there is a three times increase in the gradient. 5 to 15 is a three times increase. So that means the rate of transport will also increase by three times. It will not double, it will increase by three times. Because please remember, what is important is the concentration gradient.